everyone. My name is Hannah Taylor, and I believe in the power of caring. And for the next 12 minutes, I'm going to explain to you the importance of caring. When I was five years old, I saw wrong for the first time. As I looked out my car window, I witnessed a man eating out of a garbage dumpster, something that sadly many of us see regularly. But for me, this was a wrong that I couldn't let go of. And deep inside of my heart, I couldn't forget about him. For a year, I worried about this man and about others who live, home, who live homeless lives, and asked my parents, who cares about them? The worry and the sadness that I felt for this man didn't go away until my mom told me something that changed all of that. It was simply this. You can do something to help, and maybe if you do, your heart won't feel so sad. Now, I know that it seems like six-year-olds don't have a lot to make change with. For me, at the time, the biggest change-making tool that I had was my voice. And I decided that even though six-year-olds have little voices, I would use mine. But first, I had to learn. I learned as much as I could about homelessness. And I talked to anyone who knew how to help or who wanted to help. And I found that as I learned more and talked to more people, that worry I had felt in my heart began to lift. When I was eight, the Ladybug Foundation became an official charitable organization. And we now support over 50 different shelters, missions, soup kitchens, and food banks all across Canada. The Oxford Dictionary defines change as to make something different or to become different. Now, I've been incredibly lucky that I've had so many chances to help and care and love and do what my heart needs me to do. And I've also been incredibly lucky that I've gotten so many chances to meet with so many incredible people. And it is because of these people that I now understand that change is not simply making something different. Change is caring in action. Through learning about homeless, homelessness, I've met many people who've had to call the streets their home. I have a beautiful friend named Rick, and his story is way more important than mine. I met Rick at the first homeless shelter I ever went to. But before I tell you about our friendship, I need to back up a little bit and explain to you one of the many harsh realities of street life. There are more than three million people in North America named Richard. And more than 5,000 people in North America are named Richard Adams. But there is only one Moochum. Richard Adams had a tough life to begin with. At the age of four, he was taken away from his family to attend a residential school. Horrible physical and verbal abuse followed. After leaving the residential school, Rick found himself in foster care, and at 10 years old, taking his first drink of alcohol. Alcoholism led him to over 27 years of homelessness. He did his best to survive every day, sleeping beside train tracks so he wouldn't freeze and begging anyone for help. This is where he became my Mushim. I call Rick my Mushim because it means grandpa in Ojibwe, and Rick is Ojibwe. Mushim is brave and wise and gentle and kind, he tells me stories and laughs with us and always compliments my mom's cooking. But he also struggles every second of every day with an addiction that rules his life. Musham tried and tried to overcome his sickness, but as hard as he tried, alcohol still ruled his decisions. Decisions about what he could do and couldn't do, who he could be around, what jobs he could do or couldn't do. Rick was part of rehabilitation programs, and my family and I did our best to help him in any way we could, but he still sometimes found himself binge drinking to feed his addiction. Then we all realized something. You don't choose addiction. Addiction chooses you. When you take that first drink or hit, you can never tell whether or not you will be a recreational user or an addict. My Mushim took that risk. He decided, over the, he decided on the high over his safety, but that was the last decision he made. After that, his addiction made his decisions for him. Mamushim says that living as an addict, your life decisions are forever clouded by your constant desire to use or escape or both. He also says the, most, the more sober days he has, the better his life becomes. But devastation for him is always one drink away. The first time I met Rick, he did two things. The first thing he did was cry. I asked him why he was crying, and he said it was because I was hugging him and looking at him and talking to him. He said they were happy tears. That taught me a few things. The first thing it did is that it showed me some of that incredible loneliness that homelessness brings. 
Simply the fact that I was talking to Rick made him cry. I would like everyone to take a second. Please use that second and think about all the people in your life that care about you. All the people that care about how you're feeling and how your life is going. Picture your life with all of those people around you. Now remove all those people. What would that life be like? I'm lucky enough that I've never felt this way. I've always had the feeling that someone cared about me. I've always had to bed to, a bed to sleep in and enough food to eat. But not everyone has that same luxury. That moment when Rick felt like someone was listening, it gave him hope. Hope is a huge part of caring change. A few years ago, there was a film created about the work that I do. Rick is in that film, and that's the most important part. While the journalists were filming Rick, he, to he talked about the importance of caring and how much hope can do. He said, because this little girl cares about me, I can wake up in the morning, sometimes on the street, out in the cold, and think I can try again today. Because someone cares, he knows that he matters. Now, originally, there was actually, oh, here we go. Now, originally this video, um, technology, it is amazing, but sometimes can be tricky. Um, now, in this video, Rick, he just, this is actually the actual footage that the journalist collected for this film. And I think that also what he talks about here, he says that, you know, as he sat on, when I first met him, I met him at the first homeless shelter, you know, I'd ever been to. And he came into the shelter, and he talks about it a little bit here. But I think that that hope that when he heard that someone was listening, you know, I think that sometimes, you know, since it lifted him up and now he's making change in his own life because he knows someone cares. And I think that sometimes because, I think that sometimes caring can be stopped or, you know, drawn back a little bit through ignorance and unknowing. You know, humans naturally, we fear the unknown and, for many people, those who are homeless, they're the unknown. And I think that when I, when I speak at different schools and businesses and conferences and meetings, I talk about how, you know, some examples are Rick and many of the other beautiful people that I've met. You know, when you stop to say hi, you realize that many homeless people, they're beautiful people, wrapped in old clothes with sad hearts. You know, and just saying hi, that gives them that little spoke, you know, spark of hope. And Rick talks about that a little bit in the video. Now, the second thing he did that day was he gave me a huge hug. As he hugged me, he whispered to me, thank you for caring about us. Now, making change is never easy. I realized just recently that change usually begins with conflict and challenging what you think is wrong. It will always require work and dedication. Actually, one of my very favorite quotes, um, my nana talked, my nana, my grandma, uh, she actually told me about it, and the quote is, it's important to be dedicated to what you do, but it's more important to be dedicated to who you do it for. And that's something especially that any, everyone should remember whenever they want to make change in something. Now, homelessness, sadly, is a huge issue that affects millions of people in many different ways. Whenever I feel like what I do doesn't matter, Rick and so many of the other wonderful people that I've met remind me that it does. Because they care about me, the Ladybug Foundation is able to keep going even when things get hard. One of the most beautiful parts of caring is that every single person has the power in their hearts to care. If you deeply care about something, no matter how young or old you are or where you come from, you can make change in the world for the better, whether it be in making a change in someone's day or someone's life. We all must remember that caring matters. What you do in the lives of others really matters. We also must remember that by being indifferent, if we don't care, change will not happen. Walking by someone who is suffering, whether it be at your workplace, on the playground, out on the street, anywhere, will not make this world a better place. If you and I don't care enough to make a difference, change doesn't happen. 
I have another friend named Brian who tries really hard to stay off the street. My great friend Julie, um, she once asked Brian how he just is able to keep trying and trying. And he said, if Hannah can care about me, I can care about me. And that is the best thing ever. And it makes my heart feel so, so hopeful. He and Rick taught me so much about what caring and hope can do. They also taught me about her how, uh, they also taught me about how caring for yourself is also extremely important. But Rick has struggled with caring for himself, as many of us do. Rick has had a hard time with dependency and addiction issues, and for a while this past year he was lost on the street because he had gone back to his old life. And while he was lost on the street, I was so worried about what might be happening to him. After this happened, Rick and I met on a park bench, and I told him that nothing had changed. I still loved him like family, and I always would, unconditionally. And he told me that he loved me too. But what I needed him to do, and what I still need him to do, is see the special person that he is, and care about himself enough to try again. There is a quote by Leo Buscaglia. Too often, we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring all of which have the potential to turn a life around. We have the ability to turn this world around for the better if we can use that power of caring that is in everyone's hearts for change. We all must always remember how much simple acts of caring also matter. Changing someone's day, changing someone's life, changing the world, because that's what caring can do. Thank you. <laughs>